Lots of traders who are in contact with us, and in some cases seeking to become a part of our team, often wonder what are the traits that they need to develop to qualify for our trading desk. Hi, I'm Seth Freuberg, the head trader of SMB Capital's Options Trading Desk here in Manhattan. And over the years, we've had a front row seat as to what are the traits that separate strong traders from those who are struggling to find consistency. In today's video, we'll be sharing with you the seven qualities that we've observed are the most predictive of success for a professional trader. So if you'd like to know what those are, then stick around because I think you're going to find these interesting. Hi, I'm Seth Freuberg, and I'm the head trader of SMB Capital's Options Trading Desk. SMB Capital is a proprietary trading firm located in Midtown Manhattan, and we provide capital for options and equity traders from all over the world, trading both remotely and in our offices here in New York City. Now, I'd like to suggest that you click on our subscribe button right now so that you don't miss any of our free trading videos that we produce for traders and investors all over the world. They're really very valuable. Okay, so as you can imagine, we're frequently contacted by traders who are interested in joining our firm, and they're often seeking guidance as to what they need to work on in their trading in order to become a successful options trader and ultimately qualify for a seat on our desk. And it's one thing to have a theoretical framework, a list of theoretical traits as to what would make a trader successful in the long run. But what I'll be sharing with you in this video are our real life observations of the traits that these guys all have in common. It's one thing to come up with a list of traits that you know logically should make someone successful, but it's another thing to watch some really solid traders and watch the way that they behave and take notes. Uh, and that's really what today's video is about. These are basically my notes from years of watching guys who are really doing well. Let me start out by pointing out that it's not like a successful proprietary options trader is cut out of a cookie cutter somewhere. There are different kinds of really great traders. Some are very conservative and risk averse. Others are willing to take on a great deal of risk if they have a certain conviction. Some successful professional options traders are directional, while others are non-directional. Some like to trade individual equity names and others like to trade only the indexes. Some like to stay away from earnings and others only trade earnings announcements. All of these distinctive styles of trading could be successful or unsuccessful. What I'll be talking about today is not a trader's individual style of trading, but rather what common qualities seem to show up in any of the successful traders, regardless of style. Now, before we get into what these seven traits are, I wanted to let you know that beyond what we're teaching you in this video, there are a large number of sound, viable, long-term techniques for trading options for income. And in that regard, we're currently running a two-hour free intensive workshop where we'll be teaching you three of those strategies that real professional options traders use. In that webinar, we'll be teaching you a really simple but incredibly effective strategy that some of the greatest investors in the world use all the time, plus an options trading strategy that has a statistical 80% probability of profit month in and month out, plus an options strategy that you can employ with a stock that you like where you'll make your target profit, whether the stock goes up goes nowhere, or even goes down a small percentage. So if you'd like to learn these strategies, then just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing now at the top right corner of your screen. That's going to open up a free registration page in a new window. So don't worry, you won't lose this video. Or you can register for the workshop at optionsclass.com. It's not often that retail traders can be taught strategies employed by actual Wall Street traders, but that's exactly what you'll be getting through this free online workshop. So click the link to sign up now and don't miss it. The number one trait that I've noticed in successful professional options traders is that they all seem to have what I call a bread and butter trade. Now in life, if there's a skill that you've developed and you have success with it and you continue to hone and improve and practice that skill repeatedly over a long period of time, well, there's a pretty good chance that you're gonna get very good at it, whether it's a sport or a hobby or a trading strategy or whatever practice that you're involved in. And what we've noticed is that every trader that comes to us has developed one particular strategy, or at most a small number of specific strategies that they've pretty much perfected. And I'd say that is the most common trait among successful options traders. A bread and butter strategy is one that you've been trading probably for many years, 
And every time you initiate the trade, you feel good about it. You feel, hey, I'm going to win this trade because you've experienced so much success with it over time and you've weathered so many different storms with it that you're just extremely confident going into the trade that you'll come out with a profit on the other end. Now, mind you, traders who have a bread and butter trade actually rarely trade the strategy as it is originally designed and classically traded. You'll notice that successful traders all have tweaked and modified the trade to make it their own and make themselves comfortable with the risks and rewards of the trading style. And in fact, most of them are in a state of constant improvement with their trades, and they will frequently add further tweaks to, through time, so they're constantly growing with their bread and butter trade format. Now, the second most prominent and important characteristic that I've observed would be a focus on risk management. You see, and I know that this is gonna sound contradictory at first, but it's actually pretty unusual for a long-term successful options trader to not, at one time or another in their careers, take a very large loss. In fact, one of the greatest options traders I know took a big hit during the 2008 financial crisis, but survived it. And why I say that that is a very common trait among long-term successful traders is that those same traders who took that large hit are the ones who are chastened by that loss. They felt the emotional and financial pain of that loss and become sensitized to the potential that such a loss could happen again if they don't learn from the mistakes that led to that loss. And so as a result of that loss, they develop a very big focus on risk management so that they never have to feel that kind of pain again. And so they're constantly watching the risks in their trades. They're constantly doing what if analyses to consider all of the different risks that could impact their trades in a big way. They always go into any overnight session asking themselves, suppose there, there's a big move tomorrow morning, even if there isn't any obvious news overnight, suppose some event, some unexpected event happens overnight and really moves the markets, what could go wrong with this trade if a big move takes place in either direction? And once having asked that question, they make sure that they have the proper defenses built into their strategy so that if the untoward event does take place, that they'll not blow past their stops and will otherwise weather the storm. Because let's face it, options income trading, which is what we practice here on our options desk, is a trading style where you should be winning nine or 10 months out of the year. In fact, you can have years where you win every month. Regardless, these trades are designed for a very high win rate because they're based upon benefiting from the natural time decay of options. And so you have this built-in factor that simply through the passage of time, your trades get more profitable, all other things being equal. And so the whole game is really about keeping your losses small enough that they can be easily absorbed into the large profit built up from the many winning months that you'll enjoy. The third trait that we've observed with consistently successful traders is an even more ironic trait, and it is that the long-term successful traders know when to take a loss. These are traders who do not have their egos so invested in their trades that they simply cannot accept that this current trade must be exited or it will mess your whole year up. These kinds of traders have developed a strong skill in a few trading styles, and one of those skills, one of the very most important skills, is the ability to recognize that the trade that they're currently in cannot be won, and it's not going to get any better. They recognize they have a certain finite amount of emotional energy, and if they continue to waste that energy on trying to salvage, salvage this trade, that they're doing a huge disservice to themselves, and they're ignoring potentially excellent opportunities that are available while they struggle to make money on their current losing cause. Instead, they close this losing trade and move on to a brand new trade where they may well be a great potential for a strong win. Now, this may sound easy to some of you, but if you've traded for a while, you'll recognize that sometimes it's very difficult to admit that it trades over and that you've lost. But the successful traders recognize that there are 12 months in a year and a very successful options income trading practice can lose in two or three of those months each year and still have a wonderful return by the end of the year. But if he gets stubborn and refuses to accept that it trades over, he can burn a giant hole in his annual returns in one month where he simply won't give up on a trade because of an emotional need to not admit that you've lost. In fact, some excellent traders foresee that a trade is heading into hopelessness and they exit early and they don't take their maximum loss, but instead they pull out of the trade early, 
under certain conditions and save even more money on their annual returns because annual returns, as you know, are a mix of wins and losses. And a loss made smaller has the exact same effect as a win made larger. And so they move on to the next trade with a clear head and optimism, and they put that losing trade into the rearview mirror. The next extremely important trait that I see in all of our consistently profitable traders is patience. Now, patience actually takes a few different forms, and both of these forms is important to the successful trader. The first form of patience manifests itself in the recognition of the fact that they've developed a bread and butter strategy that has worked for them over the long haul and that following that strategy has served them well over the years. And so the best idea is to follow that strategy. That means not getting ahead of the market, thinking that you are the all-knowing eyes and that you, for a certainty, know what the market's going to do next. You see, one of the first principles I learned as a trader many years ago is an expression that one of my favorite options mentors used, and that is, and I quote, the market can do whatever the hell it wants to do whenever the hell it wants to do it. And to this day, it is still the most important lesson that I've learned about the markets as it cautions me all the time. If you think that you know what the market's going to do next, you're probably going to be wrong more often than you're right, unless you're extremely talented and experienced. And so this consistently successful options trader is patient and takes his adjustments, his pre-planned trade modifications and course changes when they come up and not earlier than necessary. And this is important because the less trade modifications you make, the better with this style of trading. And so it's a pretty bad idea to get ahead of the market and anticipate something that hasn't happened yet and make an adjustment that ends up hurting you because you made that adjustment prematurely. A second crucial aspect of patience is patience exhibiting during trade execution. The best options traders don't, unless the situation is extreme, chase the price for a trade initiation or adjustment. Rather, they say to themselves that at some point today, I want to make a certain change to my trade at the right price. And so they set the trade up on their screen and they calmly observe the prices of the trade they want to make, whether it's a butterfly or a vertical spread or whatever. They first observe the pricing, weigh it against what they know is reasonable and normal, and then either wait for that price to come around and then execute the trade at that point, or alternatively, they actually can just put in an order at that excellent price, a price they'd love to get filled at, and then wait for that order to get filled. And typically, his patients will be rewarded because in many cases, you only need the market to kind of jiggle around a little bit at some point during the day. And if it moves enough, even temporarily, you'll tend to get your order filled. And so these two forms of patience, following your trading rules and not getting ahead of the market and the wisdom to be patient and discriminating in trade execution, these two forms of patience are seen in almost every successful options trader that I've ever met. The next trait that we've observed is that the best options income traders are not tinkerers. You know, tinkering around and trying different things is fun if you're an eccentric inventor somewhere, but with these kinds of professional options income strategies, the best thing to do, frankly, is nothing. Because time is your friend on options income trading, and in the perfect market, you need to do nothing. Just let the natural properties of time decay create profit in your trades and take the trade off for profit. These kinds of trades have their own built-in profit machines and they don't need your help most of the time. Therefore, it's not a good idea to adjust the trade if it doesn't help need to be adjusted according to your time-tested successful protocol just because you're bored. If you're bored, do a crossword puzzle or play a game on your phone or learn a new language for God's sakes, but don't just adjust because it seems like a cool thing to do. You have to have a business reason, a solid trading reason to make a move on your trade once you've started it. You know, Dr. Brett Steenbarger, who works very closely with our traders here, once did a Q&A webinar for our options trading community. And someone asked him about the importance of creativity in trading. And his answer is very pertinent to this tinkering issue. He said, Pour all of the creativity you want into your back test and your trade design processes. But once you've designed the trade and tested it, that's when the creativity ends and when following your carefully laid out plan begins. Don't experiment once your trade is live with real money. What are you, crazy? Once you're in your trade, you follow your plan. 
Top flight traders understand this and they don't tinker. They don't trade because they're bored. They trade because it's necessary according to their plan. Let me tell you something, if a whole day goes by and there's not a single trade made on our trading desk, nine times out of 10, that will be a strong, positive trading day for us. And that's often the kind of day where the market trades in a small, low volatility range. And those kinds of days bring a lot of value into our trades without our having to do anything, without our having to tinker at all. And so why mess with our trades when they have their own natural profit machines that create value within the nature of the trade itself. And if we tinker around, we can actually easily destroy that value for no good reason. I don't want you to misunderstand. Great traders are very creative in the trade design and idea generation side of their jobs. But once they've carefully designed a trade around a specific idea, which may be a very creative idea, they tinker around using backtesting software or other tools, but once they finish their trade design and they take the trade live with real capital, professional traders simply execute their plans, exhibiting patience and discipline. Now, the next thing we've noticed is that really top flight traders have what we call a continuous improvement mindset, where the trader is always looking for ways to improve their trading strategies. You see, they got onto our trading desk in the first place by going through a long-term process of honing and improving their trades continuously, improving and tweaking their strategies to make them so successful that we invited them to trade our capital. Well, for professional traders, that process does not stop when you earn your spot on the trading desk. Rather, professional traders are innovators by nature. They are people who continue to look for ways to improve their trading skills. They know how to think out of the box to come up with ideas to improve strategies and to improve the results and the consistency of those strategies. They do that by studying with mentors, reading books about trading, reading trading blogs, and probably most importantly, sharing ideas with other traders, particularly those on the desk alongside them. And so all great traders maintain this mindset of improvement and thereby they maintain their edge. Now the final trait that we found that all of our great traders have is what you would call a reasonable competency in technical analysis. Now, what I mean by a reasonable level is that a trader can basically spot the points on a chart, those points that are fairly obvious to anyone who's been trading for a while. They can see that we've hit a support level or we've hit a resistance level or we're in between levels. You can see when it appears that the market's heading for all time highs or perhaps a major level on a stock or an index has just broken. Nothing brilliant, nothing ingenious, just a general sense of where the market is. So for example, some of our traders use strategies that perform very well in bear markets, but as the market continues to sell off, those strategies actually become more and more dangerous because as a large sell off keeps accelerating, the possibility of a huge bounce becomes more and more distinct. And so therefore traders with a reasonable sense of technical understanding of the market would tone down their bearish strategies from a capital commitment standpoint and pour more capital into strategies that do not have a downside bias once the market has sold off substantially. Now, that kind of decision making requires a little bit of technical understanding of support and resistance levels in the market. And if you do not have that kind of experience and you don't really know how to look at a price chart and spot key areas of inflection, then you'll be a little less likely to be successful in our style of trading. Now, I put this trait last on the list because it's actually the least important trait of the seven. And that's because this style of options trading that we practice on our options desk is very forgiving. And even if the market moves out of the expected range you'd expect, you can modify the trade and still make money in many cases once you learn our style of trading. However, in terms of trade entries and certain trade decisions and positioning, it doesn't hurt to have some sense of market levels and that kind of feel will give you some edge in your trading. So what I'd like you to take away from today's video is in a sense, a checklist. I'd like you to think of yourself along the lines of these seven traits and ask yourself, do I lack in any of these traits and do I wish to become a professional options income trader? Because if you say yes to both of these questions, then you need to proactively develop a plan to acquire these seven qualities as in that case, you're more likely to be successful. So please comment in the comments section in this video where you're struggling the most and perhaps we can do a video in the future to address those issues more deeply. 
I'll look forward to your comments. And just to remind you, as I said earlier, if you enjoyed this video and learned something valuable from it and would like to learn the details of three real-world option strategies that professional options traders use all the time, then you should check out the free options class that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click that link that should be appearing now at the top right corner of your screen. That's going to open up a free registration page in a new window so you won't lose this video, don't worry. Or just go ahead on over to optionsclass.com to register for this free intensive workshop. It's really a rare opportunity for retail traders and investors to learn directly from Wall Street traders, but that's exactly what you're going to be getting through this free online workshop. So click the link to sign up now and don't miss it. And please don't forget to click on the subscribe button right now so you won't miss all of the free trading videos that we're posting constantly on our channel to help you to improve your game as an options trader. And don't forget to comment below which of the seven traits mentioned in this video are traits you need to personally work on. And hopefully we'll be able to be helpful in a follow-up video in the future on those topics. Thanks.